Hillary Freskin, H-I-L-A-R-Y. Freskin is F-R-E-S-C-O-L-N. Uh, and how old are you, Hillary? I'm 43. Okay, and you are female, correct? Is that right, Joe? <laughs> Forty-three. Okay. <laughs> I always forget. Well, and I will say I'm going to follow that up with um. What is your birthday? Uh, two eleven seven seven. Yes, I'm female. <laughs> um, where were you born? So I was actually born at home in Shannon County, um, out by Rocky Falls. My parents had a home birth back when home births were still illegal, and they had a midwife come, and I was born at home. Um. And how long have you lived uh, here at where we're at right now? We've lived here in this house two years. We actually moved back to Mountain View about seven years ago. And then and we uh, lived in what we call the napping house. So for five years, while uh, we built, as soon as we found out we were expecting Aristarchus, we thought, hmm, we're going to outgrow this house pretty quickly. So we started making plans. And then we just connected the two houses. So we sleep in that house, and then we play and live in this house and enjoy it. Can you tell me, um, just kind of like we were talking about earlier, kind of the, that in-between of where God was calling you guys uh, from when you lived in Shannon County until now? So um, I did medical school in Columbia. And then we moved to South Carolina and did residency in South Carolina and went to the beach once a week for those three years that we lived there, which was fabulous. And um, we had Jonas there. And then we moved. We were trying to decide where God wanted us to live um, when we finally got my first job after 11 years of schooling and um, really prayed about it and felt like we would move back to Missouri because my husband's family is here and our family is here. Um, but there was just so many open doors and confirmation that God really wanted us in Illinois, that we moved to Illinois, and we just had a fabulous time there and really um, grew in the Lord and made lots of deep connections and friendships. And then we had Clay there, and then we moved back here, and we've had five kids in the last six years here, which is fabulous because we have Joe's parents that are great, wonderful grandparents, and then my parents, which are fabulous to have close and help love on kiddos. Now, we're in Illinois. We've lived in Hoopston, um, Illinois, which is uh, about 90 minutes south of Chicago. Um, and can you tell me a little bit about your occupation? So I'm a family medicine physician, and um, I do mostly outpatient and um, work in the clinic at Mountain View. Uh, and what do you do those other um, five days of the week? So I work Mondays and Fridays, um, but in the morning I homeschool, and um, we have seven kids and um, are blessed to be able to teach them at home and share with them our values and work on character issues and love of the Lord. And then my husband farms, and so we're able to be an integral part of that as well. And can you just like list all your family members and their age? Okay, so we have Jonas, he just turned 16, and um, Clay is 12, and Adeline is 7. Uh, Aristarchus just had a birthday and turned 5, and Judah and Oscar are twins. Judah's the oldest, and they're 2, um, and Emelina is 8 months. Um, and do you have any talents or hobbies that you would like to tell us about? Oh, wow. Um, let's see, I do lots of little things like um, crochet and cook and uh, we like to sing together. Um, we do a lot of board games and we like being outside, we like to camp. Um, we've got a couple of ponds, we enjoy fishing and I we host a lot of um, we have home church, and so we host the church in our house, and we do women's Bible studies in our house, um, and just really enjoy opening up our home and having people over. So we try to do that regularly to have people in our home and um, just enjoy being with them. So I don't know. I, I'm kind of eclectic. I read a lot and enjoy a lot of different things. I, I get a passion, really excited about something. Do it, all in for six weeks and then I kind of move on to something else. So, 
Right. That was like the oral history, like the actual like question okay. answer that I had to go through. But now we're gonna kind of do just more free form. Okay. Um, and honestly, I'd love to go back and talk a little bit more about you and your husband and sure. how you met. Okay. If that's all right. Sure. So um, Joe and I met in kindergarten, and then we went to grade school together, and we graduated uh, high school together. Um, we were prom king and queen, and he played basketball and I played volleyball, and we were both really big into sports, and um, the Lord just kind of led us together, and we got married and moved to um, you know, South Carolina and um, been back here. Um, he, God really changed his heart to farming, so he grew up farming, his parents farmed. Uh, and he kind of wanted to go to the city and have a little house with brick walls around it and fences and, uh, you know, just be a little tiny yard to take care of and do computers. So his degree was computers. And then while we were in Illinois, God just really changed his heart and gave him a passion for grass and regenerative grazing and um, high-density cattle. And he just started doing a lot of reading and um, throwing these ideas around to his dad who had been cattle farming for 30 years, kind of in the traditional way, and they both got excited about it, and so when we moved back here, then he was able to do that with his brother, and um, then they do regenerative crazy now. Um, what else about my upbringing? <laughs> uh, can you tell me just a little bit of what it was like to grow up uh, where you did with Phil and Betty? Uh, you know, what was, what was that like for you? Um, it was great. My parents were very, um, family was very important. Um, being outdoors and in nature was important. Read alouds were really important. Um, so they read to us regularly. Uh, and um, we, we um, lived, you know, we had the t-shirt shop. And so I was able to grow up working in the t-shirt shop and kind of, um, become more responsible doing those types of things. Uh, we were a big part of the community. Uh, school was a big part of the community. Sports are big in, the, um, in eminence, and so um, we really participated in volleyball. If you're in a small town, you pretty much do everything. So I can just remember working at the store, at the t-shirt shop, and um, tourists would come and visit, and they'd say, because they're on vacation, and they think, oh, this is a sleepy little town, and what do you do here? It's just there is, life is so simple here and slow here, um, and I I would just say, well, every night of the week I'm busy. I'm running to act teams and and church things and uh, volleyball practice and um, play practice and uh, 4-H and FHA and you're just you're involved in everything when you're a small town. Looking back, that was um, you know we spent a lot of doors a lot of time outdoors and at, on the rivers and um, being involved in the community and school and sports were a big part of it and that was a big part of our lives and so we did a lot of traveling sports and um, academics. Um, my parents were really good at just encouraging, um, being very positive. They never put any pressure on me. Um, we did do a lot of read alouds which I do with my kiddos because I think that's really important kind of to develop a family culture um, but also just uh, help uh, kids experience things outside of themselves and so I had my grandparents close um, and that was a, another blessing so just had a really great childhood and when you say read aloud just reading out loud just different yes absolutely there's so many studies and benefits of reading aloud to kids even in the womb but definitely um, the younger years just developing vocabulary and Helping kids to uh, identify how is this character most like you? How is it um, different from you? Helping you to experience challenges that you wouldn't naturally, just kind of broadening your horizons. Um, but also vocab development it eases um, their ability to learn reading themselves. Um, and as you read, uh, you can pull out the historical aspect or the science part of it or what the artist was doing in the pictures. Uh, so I just think read alouds are, are so rich in education. Well, I mean, speaking of that, I mean, was there, whenever you left, I mean, is there something that made you want to become a doctor? So I always wanted to be involved in people's lives. And um, the beautiful thing about being a physician is 
all day long. You just get to open a door and, and walk in and intimately be a part of somebody's life because they share um, they, their struggles and challenges with you. Um, they trust you, and so you get to immediately kind of step into a, a an important part of their life. Um, so it's just it's something that I feel really privileged to be able to do. But I did want to be able to um, be of help in some way and be involved with people. I wasn't sure if I would, coming from a small town, um, wasn't sure if my husband was salutatorian and I was valedictorian with several other of our classmates, so that was kind of fun. Uh, but I still wasn't sure if we were going to be able to um, just kind of make it uh, in college with all these other um, really um, enriched backgrounds and that we would be able to... Um, you know, do well with medical school. So I kind of had a lot of different options open. I thought about physical therapy. Um, I thought I would like to either be um, involved with, I really liked pediatrics and OB uh, in thinking about med school. And I did a lot of that, um, probably did over 100 deliveries in my residency, very interested in it. But then when we started having our own kids, I realized that the being home with my kiddos, you know, it's a lifestyle change when you're on call all the time to do deliveries. So I thought, well, I'd either want to do family medicine, where you could do all of that, um, or be a kindergarten teacher. So <laughs> I ended up being able to do well and, and get into medical school and just really feel privileged to be able to be a part of people's lives and do. Uh, the wonderful thing about family medicine is your babies all the way to grandmas, so you get to do all in between. Amanda, what do you think is your the favorite part about being a doctor? If you had to pick like just the one thing, I think just being able to be a part of someone's life. I, um, they can tell me what challenges they're having and I can kind of walk them through some things that um, I have found that might be helpful in their situation and I can pray with them and um, just really be able to be a sounding board for them to kind of share what they're going through. Also, um, obviously, uh, really encourage people to exercise and eat healthy. Um, there's so much benefit to exercise. If it were in a pill, everybody would take it because it's so incredibly beneficial to um, your your mood, decreases risk of dementia, heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure. It's just beneficial in so many ways. But we're also finding all the ways that diet is helpful as well. Um, eating things as close to nature as possible. God packaged things really well with fiber along with the um, sugars and um, grass-fed beef and just when when things are um, the way that God designed them, it tends to be a lot better for our bodies and they function better. Um, and can you kind of tell me a little bit about what your life is like? I mean, since you do have your parents and your husband's parents so close, Joe's parents so close. So we homeschool in the mornings. Um, we do family devotions together where all the kids sit and um, Joe reads from the Bible and we have um, the kids read from the Bible as well, and um, we learn scripture together, and we sing together, um, and then I teach. Jonas has, um, we do what's called Tapestry of Grace, which is a homeschool curriculum uh, for teenagers. So once a week, there's six teens that come um, to our house, and we go through history and government and philosophy um, and um, literature. We're reading Les Mis right now, and it's just great to be able to have them try to make connections together that they wouldn't make through Socratic discussion and asking questions, that the, those kind of connections that you wouldn't make on your own. Um, and then with uh, Clay, I do, he does a lot of his work independently and then I do about an hour with him. And then um, we do uh, about an hour with Adeline with her reading, writing, and her math, and then she does some independent work. And then these guys, of course, are all in the middle of it, and then we read with Aristarchus and Nurse Emelena and try to make some food and then then we all um, we do a lot of activities together so I say mandatory family fun so we'll all go outside and um, do things we have a little box that we draw out of so it might be like wad up paper and have a snowball fight or have put on a puppet show or um, so we really try to make um, family and um, just God be central in our lives so we're always uh, yesterday, Aristarchus said, can we go to the river? So we packed everybody up and we just went and threw rocks in the river and had adventures along the water. And so we just try to really um, enjoy what the Lord has given us here. Well, and speaking of 
can you kind of, I mean, I, you've already told us cause about the walkthrough of the house, but can you kind of do that again for the camera? Sure. So um, Joe's brother and cousin um, built the house. We designed it and they were patient with us where we would, they would come to work and we'd say, you know what, I had an idea. How about if we put a little loft here or how about if we put a little cubby hole here? And um, so they uh, were very gracious to constantly be um, uh, letting us do our new ideas. And we got the barnwood, it's 100 year old uh, barnwood from about three miles from here. Our friends uh, were gonna tear down their barn and Joe said, well, uh, can I pay you? And we'll take the, the wood. and." Um, so then they're super sweet because they come over and they say, wow, look what you did with it. And um, so it's just, it's been a real blessing for us to be able to, my husband had one stipulation about this new house. He said, no drywall because we're going to have a lot of kids and our, we like to let our kids, um, you can see we've got swings and climbing walls and we, and we like to let our kids just be kids. And so they can knock off the, uh, off the, um, wood with their feet while they're swinging and it doesn't cause any problem because it's barn wood so it's a nice durable house that we can just um, be ourselves in and not have to worry too much about keeping it nice <laughs> um and can you tell me a little bit about like going out to like crystal creek like what's that like with the kids um so we just went to crystal creek a couple of weeks ago and we went with three other families and we went camping there um, it's a beautiful place. There's, uh, you know, they've done a, a great job with trying to <laughs> tickle. <laughs> it's tickling you. <laughs> uh, really trying to open it up to have it be a blessing to people where they can go and be out in nature and kind of unplug from the world and think about what's important and why am I here and what's my purpose and just reconnect with families because there's not, you know, screen time is very limited at our house. We don't do, um, screens except we do Monday movie night uh, and other than that we really try to limit screens and that's the nice thing at Crystal Creek there's no screens because they can't get service out there so it just allows people to kind of connect um, but when we go there we just enjoy the the ducks and the peacocks and the rabbits and we go we went uh, on the paddle boats and went fishing in the pond um, the kids of course had adventures running back and forth they caught crawdads and went fishing uh, in the creek and they love to build dams and play in the water there and then they you know they have the cows um, so really just running around and making adventures when the nice thing I think about kids doing a lot of read alouds and being read to a lot and not having a lot of screen time is it seems like their imaginations really soar and so you don't have to have a lot of entertainment you just need your imagination and some place to play uh, outside and you can find something to do. So that's how you grew up, right? That's how I grew up, yeah. Yeah, we, um, we definitely did. We always, on the weekends, um, Sunday was kind of family day. And so we knew if we wanted to have a friend over, that was fine, but we were going to do something as a family. And so we would go for a walk in the woods or um, do things together as a family. Um, but we just... Um, mm -mm. I'm not sure what else I can think of. <laughs> I, I have to think. What did we do? We did a lot of, you, you know, when you're part of the public school system and you're playing sports, a lot of your life is practice in the gym. Uh, and I played college volleyball at Drury. Uh, and so um, I spent, do you guys want to go So I spent a lot of time. Um, traveling and doing traveling teams and that kind of thing. And at volleyball, do you have a specialized position that you play? I know that like, it goes around, but... You do, yeah. So I did, um, I worked as a setter uh, on the court and then also as a, I did everything. Outside hitter, you know, when you're in small, small town, you kind of do everything. Um, and then I did middle blocker as well, too, so just, but really enjoyed it. Um, it was, uh, volleyball was great because it kind of gave me uh, a group uh, in college. Uh, also, I had kind of the pre-med group, um, but we, we kept it really busy. I mean, when you're, when you're pre-med and when you're playing college sports, you're, you're pretty busy. Your time is not just, um, not your own, really. You have a lot of other commitments, so. Well, it sounds like you kind of carried that. You know, throughout, I mean, because you're very busy now. <laughs> we, I think God has given me a lot of energy, so. 
<laughs> I just, I, I, I really just feel like that's from him. You know, a lot of times, um, like uh, during the first trimester when I was pregnant with the twins, I thought, oh wow, is this what it's like to be pregnant when you're older? Because I have no energy. But that only lasted, thankfully, for uh, about 12 weeks, and then my energy came back. So, yeah, I do have a lot of energy, um, which. I think is probably challenging for the kids sometimes because I always have a new idea and a new system we're gonna do and um, let's let, you know I, I got interested in um, solfage the other uh, a few months ago teaching the kids how like the do re mi fa sol la ti and you do it with the hand signs and so then you um, teach the kids how to hear it by ear uh, and then um, there's just different like all the notes have different positions. Uh, so like um, Takadimi would be 16th notes and Tadi would be 8th notes and um, so you you do Ta, Tadi, Tadi, Takadimi, Tadi. So uh, anyway, I'll get interested in something like that and now the kids are immersed in it and let's go gung-ho with this and now I want to teach you this and then I'll move on to something else. So it it is fun having energy to take on new things. Right now I'm really interested in lifestyle medicine and that is how food, um, even sleep, and um, stress management, how all of that impacts um, diabetes and high blood pressure and how we have these pockets um, of the culture that do those things very well and how they have less disease and how we as a society have kind of gone away from some of those things. Um, we oftentimes want a pill to make things better uh, and it's not, it's not that simple because that comes with a lot of side effects and complications and that kind of thing. So um, anyway, yeah, I I am always, right right now we're doing with um, Tapestry Grace, um, we're doing scripture memorization, so we're memorizing Colossians chapter 3, and um, we're always having the kids do different type of memory work, and um, we do some call outs, so I'll say, leave it. Rather than hand it. God is opposed to the proud. But gives grace to the humble. Hustle. Tell about. I am thankful. Whether it's a little or a lot. So we have different call outs that we do um, and uh, just are always trying to renew the mind and learn new new things about the Lord and how he has um, entrusted us to be able to bless others and how he's gifted us to be able to serve others and um, just being thankful for how he's blessed us. So he's uh, Jesus has immensely been a, a blessing in our lives and we want to we serve a generous king, so we want to be generous to others and be thankful for where he's placed us in life. Hi, guys. Do you have any questions that you want to ask? Or? Yeah, it is, what was the primary reason that you chose to homeschool? Um, we, well, one is I just love being with the kids. So, so I couldn't imagine them, um, you, when you spend all that time investing in them, uh, when they're little, the, just the thought of them going and being away from you for eight hours a day is, I think, really challenging to know that um, you have uh, a life and a culture that you want them to understand and be blessed by and be a part of. Uh, so I think um, wanting them to be able to, when, when you're at, um, away from the home, you're still going to have sin issues, but it's going to be dealt with in a, in a different way. When you're home, you can see all those character issues. And I know that I'm definitely very academically minded. Um, I mean, you can tell with our, with our kids when they're, they're studying Shakespeare and um, Les Mis. And, you know, we're, we're always doing and trying to kind of push the envelope there. But I also know that academics isn't my primary goal. My primary goal is really um, that they uh, are able to learn how to think of others first and bless others and um, uh, be able to serve others and that they understand um, that if you make much of Jesus, it's much easier in your life than making much of yourself and um, that they, you really can't do that unless you kind of have the time to be able to see wills rubbing up against each other and conflicting with each other and um, take a, a minute to say, okay, so what's going on? What are you thinking? Um, are you being a blessing? Are you serving self? You know, and, and both people, usually when there's conflict, it's because both people are 
um, looking at how they're trying to get the best for themselves. And so we have the ability to be able to do that because we, the more time you spend with people, the more you get to uh, have conflict and kind of work through that. And so I think if, if they can learn how to work through conflict and see the other person's uh, side of things and see how they can be a blessing, that will help in their parenting, that will help in their community, that will help with their spouses, uh, and they will um, ultimately be able to be the person that God's called them to be. So, so most of that is um, pointing towards the person's, you know, the, the, the child developing into a specific type of person, but not, it's not, it doesn't sound career oriented. Mm -mm. Um, so <laughs> you're right. Do you, do you? Some parents would say, "I want my daughter to grow up to be a ballerina, or I want my daughter to grow up to be a teacher." So, you don't have those goals for your children, or no, I really don't. Uh, so Jonas just took the SAT last week. I mean, he's definitely college bound, and um, but our goals are that our no matter where our kids are and no matter what they're doing, that hopefully they will be serving the Lord and loving the Lord. So whether um, you know we feel like the mission is the the space right between your feet, so you don't need to go somewhere to um, tell others about Jesus and be a missionary. That the mission field is is your home and right in front of you. And so if they can um, be in a uh, relationship and um, that honors the Lord and that they um, are serving their communities and they're reaching out to their neighbors, um, that's really important to us that they are not just living a life that's serving self, that they're a part of a community and where they can bless others, um, but that also means blessing their spouse and blessing their kids, and um, that then we'll be we'll feel like that's a success if their lives are bringing glory to. Them. Okay, so I do remember when the film crew was at my parents' house um, because it was um, you, you felt like that there was something important going on and something that I wanted to be a part of, probably kind of like you. <laughs> And uh, I just remember that I wasn't supposed to be in the film. I was supposed to stay back. And my older sister, she was four years older. She was very obedient. But I, somehow I ended up on my, um, you know, my parents' lap. But they, um, you know, that's just like my parents. They're always gracious and welcoming. And uh, that's I, one of the memories I have of my dad is just being in that house and him having his brown coffee mug and drinking his coffee and just me snuggling on his lap. And um, so those things, you know, they all kind of come back together. I remember being in that house and my mom um, rocking me in, in the rocking chair by where we lived, or by, by our beds. And also my dad would always wake us up with, um, it's raining, it's pouring, the old man is snoring, <laughs> get out of bed, get, you sleepy head. So just kind of silly things like that uh, in that house. But we just, uh, the funny thing when you're little, so the creek was right down from that house, and now when I go back and look at it, it wasn't very far away. And I remember that being such a trek to that creek behind the house. And I was thinking just um, yesterday, the kids were all going down to the pond, and they love to get their snacks together, so it was like some apples, and put them in a baggie, put them in their backpack. It's just really fun to get all the, that fun stuff in your backpack. And then we call it going on an adventure. So they go down to the pond, and so I went down there with them and was thinking, this will, especially for the twins, because they're two, this will seem like such a long ways away in their minds, but um, when they get older, they'll see. It's not that far. So anyway, um, the I do remember them coming, uh, and uh, just I would say then Joe and I, my husband, we watched that film when we were in grade school uh, because it was kind of a part of the community, and so I can remember in school watching that and it kind of being like, oh, there's Hillary in there, so that was kind of a fun moment. Um, but I, you know, definitely I see the um, I see that picture of Shannon County. Uh, still, there's uh, it's definitely there. There's a t there's a certain type of people that move to this area. People that want to uh, live in the land and off of the land and be self sustainable. And um, even I think that even carries over into um, the medical aspect. So I see that 
a lot of my patients that come in, they're not interested in the government telling them what to do <laughs> as far as Medicare goes. Um, they don't want to follow some of these guidelines and do do things like they don't want to wear masks and they don't want to have vaccinations and um, so I think that it, it tends to draw kind of an independent sort of person into this area um, and so you see that in all, all walks and not just um, all it, it carries over. Would you? I'm sorry to jump in, Andy, but I just have to follow up on. Would you say that that sort of resistance to government uh, order or intrusion or whatever crosses both the long to the multi generation family as well as the people who are families like your family, where it's only you know your second generation? Um, we, what do you mean, like the Pyatts? How multi? Well, so. There are, there are families that have lived it here for hundreds of years, yes. or at least a hundred okay, years. Okay, sure. And then there is your family has been spent here 40 years. The right. patients that you see, does that, does that resistance cross, you know, into both, into both uh, parties, into both Well, I groups? was, right, sure. So I would say that there are the people that have been here multiple, multiple generations and they haven't left, so there's a reason for that, because they enjoy this kind of lifestyle. And the people that move here, very similar. They moved here because of this type of lifestyle. Um, and there's, even with homeschooling, I mean, there is freedom. There's not a lot of regulations. So you can do what you feel is best for your child, not what some government person that doesn't know anything about your child dictates what they think is best. You can look at your child, assess their strengths and weaknesses, know what's actually most beneficial, beneficial for them at the time, and proceed in a direction that you feel like is is the best and so I think that a lot of people in this area tend to feel like they um, they want to they want the churches to be the ones that are helping others not necessarily the government coming in and doing that that people need to be efficiently um, doing that job rather than kind of top-down for what they often feel is inefficiency from the government Did that answer your question? It did. It raises another question in my mind, but <laughs> but I don't want to, you know, dominate the conversation. That's all right. Um, well, I, I'm hearing a conflict, or I'm or at least hearing two different points of view. I asked you what your primary reason for choosing to homeschool your children was, and that was because you wanted them to, to learn to serve the Lord, to learn to serve. But then I also heard you say you didn't want government intruding on... You didn't say your children, but I mm -hmm. would assume that you, I'm assuming that you mean mm -hmm. that you feel you know better than the government would mm -hmm. um, about how to raise it. And I'm just trying to, in my mind, uh, equate those two or figure out where they mesh, mm -hmm. if you know, if, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. maybe if you could say a little bit more about those two things. Well, I think that those two do dovetail nicely um, because we. Um, We do feel like that uh, we understand our, our children's strengths and weaknesses better than um, another outside entity would. Now, that's not to say we don't have anything against public school. I think public schools are fantastic. Joe and I both had a fantastic public school um, upbringing and uh, really benefited from the public school. And public schools, are they have a place. There are lots of people that aren't... Um, aren't interested or equipped or have the time or the season of life to be able to homeschool their kids. And having a, a, um, a place where kids can get educated, well, I think that the eminence education is, is phenomenal. They did a really good job, uh, particularly in the younger years. Uh, so, but I, but I also think that we, um, there's nobody that's gonna love your kids more than you do and um, want the, them to flourish and so we're able to assess their strengths and weaknesses and be able to tailor their education to that. You, um, with public education, sometimes you're labeled as being behind because you're developing at a different rate. Um, and that stigma sometimes can be challenging for that child because they feel like that they failed and they don't measure up. Whereas in a few years, they catch up to where their peers would be, but, um, you know, you're able to do that at home. You're able to see, well, this isn't really clicking for you right now. Let's take a little bit of a break. Let's focus more on um, these things, and then we'll come back around, maybe from a different angle. Let's try this uh, a different way. 
and then have success. Um, and, and you're able to basically tutor your children. Each kid has a tutor, so in a classroom, um, that's a little bit more challenging because you're, you know, you're one teacher and you've got a lot of students and a lot of different needs and a lot of different levels, and that's challenging. So um, I think that this area does tend to draw people that are more interested in um, gardening and um, being family oriented, being community minded, um, being uh, more independent. And I would say just within our own family, one of the ways we really foster that is we do limit screen time. We, um, you know, the, the, we just have a Monday movie night and we really try not to do other screen time outside of school if you need to do screen time for school. Uh, and so that gives the kids hours of time to learn. Sometimes I've thought about um, the average person watches over 40 hours of, of screens a week. That's like a full-time job. What are they missing out on? And how is that generation then um, going to move forward with having missed uh, 40 hours a week of education that they could have been whittling or uh, gardening or learning. Uh, we have a neighbor that um, is very sweet and she, um, we organized several um, other families and so we went to her house and um, she was teaching us how to do different uh, projects and um, making rugs and crocheting and uh, just different things that we could kind of do in a community setting. Um, she makes sassafras tea and so she was telling us how she goes out and uh, she gets the sassafras root uh, and just makes the tea and we always try to do things off, you know, it's fun when it's blackberry season. We bundle the kids up because, you know, the chiggers are really going to get you with the blackberries and so, um, and watch out for snakes and so we go and we like to pick blackberries and then we wait for the first frost so we can do the persimmons and then we have um, the walnut trees around the house and we uh, collect all the holes and we have a walnut cracker um, that we enjoy so we made some chocolate chip cookies with wal our own walnuts off of um, out of the yard uh, just uh, a couple of weeks ago and um, we enjoy getting the eggs from the chickens and uh, the um, you know, we eat our own grass-fed beef, and we've got a friend that has uh, pasture poultry, uh, and they move their chickens every day, and they just eat the bugs and um, the and the grass. Of course, they give them some uh, feed as well, and so we really try to do um, things that are more connected to nature. It's it's just satisfying for one thing. Um, it helps you to look forward to the seasons and to the changes. And um, just the kids have their own sheep. They bought their own. We have a herd of about 40 um, sheep with goats, but then they wanted to invest in that as well. Um, we have the, my um, husband's uh, kiddos. They own their own cows, and we have a family farm uh, meeting once a month. And the uh, younger generation is able to participate in that and um, purchase cattle and uh, learn. My uh, oldest son is actually learning the art of running meetings and so he is uh, there with all of his aunts and uncles and grandparents and he's the one in charge. <laughs> and so he said this is a challenging place to be in. Uh, learning how to facilitate meetings and uh, moving towards a common goal. Uh, so we try to bring in the um, younger generation into the family business and give them a place where they can actually speak and and um, have um, uh, invest in their own way um, so that they can uh, be a part of that uh, we every day we move the cows and so the kids love to come we have a golf cart and we just drive out there and my husband does regenerative grazing and so he moves them every day with an electric fence and he just reels it up the kids get a kick out of, whoo, come on, whoo, come on. They start calling the cows before we even uh, get close. And they do not want to miss out on that. They absolutely love going and moving the cows every day. Um, so it's when you're out there, it's a big world. All of a sudden, you are no longer in your little mindset of whatever the problems were that was going on. Now it, you're out there with the sky and the clouds and the grass. And it just, you're, you realize that you are a huge uh, you're a part of a huge world that God is creating, just a small part of it, and 
and kind of resets your thinking. So we definitely spend a lot of time outdoors. I would say just the craft part of it, um, there are still, we love going to the arts and crafts and to like the haunting of the hills and the things that they have in Eminence at Alley Springs where they highlight the older um, traditional ways of doing things. And uh, last year for Christmas, the kids didn't get any presents except handicrafts. I just gave family crafts under the tree. That's all we got. Um, so that they, uh, whenever we need something to do, they just pull out of the box. And so we've got a lot of just uh, painting on rocks or um, doing, uh, they were learning to sew, um, doing crochet, just different types of ribbon cutting things, um, leather working, spooning with yarn. Uh, so uh, making pot holders. Uh, I, I love doing read-alouds where the kids all just listen to the read-aloud and we all do crafts together. Um, so I think learning to do something productive with your hands is very satisfying and very important as well, especially something that you can keep that isn't just going to get thrown in the trash, but it's something that's actually beautiful and worthwhile. Uh, painting, we do a lot of those um, types of things. They, uh, When I was growing up, we had 4-H, which was... Uh, all the community members just kind of coming together and teaching you different things. So my mom would teach us about wildflowers. We would go out and um, learn what the different names were and that's something that I've carried on. Yeah, so I, I think that people that move to this area oftentimes are people that really do value family and um, living a little bit more uh, simpler, even though it's easy to be, um, you you can be as crazy busy as you want, no matter where you're living, and so it's easy to kind of um, kind of get on that roller coaster. But I think this area tends to be able to afford you the luxury of kind of taking a step back, taking a deep breath, um, and living outside of that a little bit. Um, so. The other thing I was just thinking is that, you know, we have neighbors that are right next door to us that, um, just an older couple, and they moved and had nothing here. They essentially just built um, their house out of um, just bit by bit as they could go. And um, we have really, they've kind of embraced our kids um, as being grandparents, and so um, they're just really interesting people, and we visit with them frequently. They'll just come and walk up here, um, but they are somebody that uh, is definitely off-grid as well. So uh, just kind of this area <clears throat> all around here, you'll find people that are more interested in um, what can they do uh, with their own hands and what they can um, accomplish just by living on the land. My husband is an outside the box thinker and so he just this year put together a uh, self-watering garden. So his idea is that you can get the the water from the rain, the rainwater, <clears throat> and then he he took these uh, buckets and then ran a hose through all of all five of them and then put sheets and wicking material um, so that it wicks the bottom part fills up with water and then it wicks up into uh, the dirt on top to water the garden so you don't have to water it. So I, I think just the ingenuitive, um, inventive, uh, what can I do um, that's outside of the box thinking is very prevalent here. And I, I know that that's, that can, obviously that's not consolidated in one particular area, but brushing up against other people that are outside the box thinkers uh, and exchanging ideas and having others that tend to be kind of like-minded in a similar area does help to cultivate that. We've talked a lot about the similarities. How, have you seen any change in the area? Hmm. I uh, probably there <clears throat> there are uh, portions of people that are going in a di different direction, but I personally just see this flood of people that are wanting to hold on to that type of lifestyle continuing to come in. I'm always meeting uh, people uh, that, I mean, I can just think of six different families that have 
recently that I've been in contact with that have moved here with the intention to live off the land, um, to have a milk cow, to have sheep and goats, and um, to homeschool, or an older couple, um, their kids are raised, but just wanted to um, get into uh, raising goats, and uh, that I don't think that that is, that's something that's deep inside certain people. I don't see that going away. I just see that increasing. And maybe it's because the communities that I run in. Um, but yeah, certainly there are some, um, I think that, you know, it's different now because when I was growing up, we had, uh, you know, it was a two hour trip to Springfield to go and, and buy what you needed for the month of groceries or things. We would do a little bit of, you know, you had some options locally, but if you wanted a uh, bigger uh, selection of things, it was a two hour trip. Um, we would go and we would shop for clothes once a year and uh, we never went to the mall. Uh, we basically just went to go and get what you needed to get. And now it's different because we have Amazon. So if you need a wedding gift, you can actually get a wedding gift for somebody. If you need a spool of thread, you can actually. So um, there, there are local um, things now like Walmart, because I grew up in Eminence, so we weren't close to Mountain View. So it, if we needed anything like that, you just had to have it on hand or you had to wait. I was gonna say that um, you may not be aware that homeschooling is a really big uh, part of this area. We were in a co-op and there was over 70 kids in the co-op um, just in the Mountain View area. And we're constantly being involved in, in different groups that are, um, we do like something with the, a nature group and then um, like we do with the Tapestry Grace with the six teenagers that we all get together. But then there's um, another group that uh, will just come together to do um, certain crafts or things. So it's just, uh, it's definitely a big uh, part of this area. Um, and I think that it's because it, you tend to, um, you tend to draw people that are um, independently minded and kind of have ideas about their own lives and, and their kids' lives and want more um, to be able to speak into their lives than some of the other, other aspects. So. Um, what are the changes that you've seen uh, in Shannon County and kind of in the area over the last four years? I mean, since you went away and came back, what was that like for you? Um, well, I, I don't know because people are people and so everywhere we've lived, um, we've, we've had really good experiences of um, just being around um, great people. So I definitely think this area, there are um, there is a, a strong family culture of people like to, it, it's hard because there's not a lot of jobs in the area. So people want their kids to come back and, and live close to them, but that can be challenging because of the jobs. Uh, and so oftentimes they just kind of have to make their own way. They have to figure out what is my skill set and how can I um, be an entrepreneur and kind of be... Um, because unless you work for the school system um, or some of kind of the local businesses, there's just there's not a lot um, that of draw as far as work experience. Uh, but it it is a uh, desire for a lot of families to have when their kids get older to have them live closer. So I would say just being around people that value family and value community uh, is that's always going to be an asset. Um, but I have found that in other places as well. Um, so trying to think about what's unique about Shannon County. I well, have uh, you just seen well, any changes over the years? Um, I mean that's hard to say because my world's been so different. When you're in a high school, <laughs> your world is your friends and your sports and um, uh, I, I would say there I think well for one the homeschool Whenever I was in high school or in in uh, grade school, there was one family that homeschooled, and that was it. Um, and that has just grown exponentially. So that has been a big change. There are a lot of families that that do homeschool. Um, I don't know. 
trying to think because all, all I kind of know is what the last seven years because I'm trying to think about you know I was just in such a different stage whenever I was um, but I I don't know that I've seen a lot of changes there's um, there's still I don't, I don't know that I personally have seen a lot of changes right. now is there anything that you just want to say or get out there things that you want people to know I would love for um, I would love for people to have the experience that we have. Um, we have a, a tight community with a lot of close friendships. Um, we're able to experience being a family, um, being involved outdoors, and I just feel like it's a really fabulous way for our kids to grow up. Um, and for us to be a part of the community. So I would love for people to be able to um, maybe tap into that. I think part of the way you can do that is, um, you know, th there's people that live in the city um, that can still cultivate that kind of environment. Um, I think some of it is unplugging from screens a little bit because uh, you can have more real relationship, um, real uh, contact um, and, and growth and space to be able to do some of these other things that can um, enrich your life more than screens uh, and uh, if, if you have a, a passion or an interest in something the you know the world is your oyster now there's so many as soon as we're excited about something we can immediately find out more about it and really just invest in whatever that new passion is because you can immediately get in touch with other people that have a similar interest. Um, so I guess I would just, I would love for people to um, know the Lord first off and um, have, oh, Emily is awake. You can bring her out here, Jojo. Um, so, I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> But I would love for people to have fulfilling lives and if there was some way that they could watch this film and walk away and just take a step back and say, well, what, what am I doing in my life that is um, moving towards that goal? Uh, how, I feel hurried. I feel anxious. I feel lost. Um, what is it that I could do differently that would um, make it so that um, I felt like I had purpose in the morning? That's ultimately what I would love for people to do is hey. know the Lord and um, know their community spend time investing in relationships because relationships are, are paramount um, and that's where it, you're really going to find purpose and meaning here Adeline can you bring her over here they might want to meet Emily okay. <laughs> So I, you know, I see, say hi, say hi, hey there. I see so many people in my practice that, um, you know, they're just, they're anxious and they don't feel like their life has meaning, um, they've, they've lost their way and, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that are under that, but oftentimes it's the relationships that are really missing and so, um, Unplugging from screens and plugging into people, into community, uh, getting to know your neighbor and saying, how can I bless you? What can I do? Um, are you going to give me a hug? <laughs> Super sweet. Then I think that that's where people find meaning is through relationships. And sometimes that is, in the Ozarks, what we do really well is we're in community and relationships with each other. And, <laughs>